Hi everybody and big welcome to CDH TV Gameplay. Today, me, Pontus and Redrick are joined by Philiam. Hello. Today I'm trying the mono blue new Malcolm again. It's just your, I was gonna say average, it's not very average. It's basically just turns and proliferation, which is kind of cute. Hey everyone, back with Elena and Thrasios. I am just trying to make infinite mana through Elena's ability, which adds red for equal to power, and then use that to sink into Thrasios and smash over, which tends to work for this deck. I'm playing Derani again. I, I have to say, I kind of like her. I've had some really good games with her so far, so I kind of want to just play test her more to see how she really feels like. I have a pretty good feeling that this is a deck that is actually working out pretty fine. We are basically a mid-range Necropotence deck with Final Fortune and the Born Upon a Wind with a kind of mid-range Grixis shell in general with Ramni at the helm marking my creatures or marking my opponent's creatures. So today I'm playing Rogsai. It's a deck that I'm kind of comfortable with. Just the common Rogsai Grixis shell, you know. Let's draw a story soon. This hand is closer than it would look at first glance. We do have a turn one Malcolm. Turn one Malcolm is kind of baseline for what it wants. It's turn one Malcolm or better. And we're close to actually having like a turn two red storm for Malcolm immediately. Or for Malcolm trigger. So we, this, I think this actually is a turn two Malcolm. If we draw a land, this is a turn. No, it's not. It's almost a turn two Malcolm trigger, but we don't have any payoff anyways. So I'm going to look for some better cards basically because this is for first, first seven this hand would be very gas if we were not going first if we we're going second i would love this hand when gemstone isn't live this is like a turn one hold up fluster turn two malcolm turn three rustic that's just too slow so let's go to six gemstone seems to like to be taunting us this hand is closer but I still think we can do better, so I'll go to five. We're also kind of hard mulling for advantage engines. Like, the One Ring is one of the best cards in this deck. So if you can use to find mana and the One Ring, we're pretty sets. This hand is weird, but I think it actually might be pretty good. We're kind of top deck reliant, but we, we do develop a turn one Malcolm, so we have two draws by turn two, two or three draws even. And we do have a lot of payoffs in our hand. It's one of those hands that we need to draw well, or we need to not be countered, or it never works. We also might just lose to Rogsai. But I'm on five, this deck doesn't move on that well, so I'm gonna be happy here, or stop here at least. And it is quite a lot of mana, so we, we can almost like hard cast a party one way pretty early. So let's see where it gets us. Let's take our first seven. Honestly, I don't need to say much about this. This is not a keep. We have zero lands, we have some spicy cards in it, but really nothing to do. So second seven. So I do like this second one because while we don't have much interaction, we do have two tutors and we're going second. We don't really know what the threats are. We know that Monza's deck is a little slower. However, we know that Rog Sai is a little faster. I think we're just going to take the risk and see what happens. Uh, we could, you know, fetch up something else. But we have enough fast mana to get Thrasios out on turn one, even if we were to pitch, let's say, Mystical Tutor and, or Phantasmal Image. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Take it away, Mons. All right. I am not going to lie. This hand is busted. It's amazing! I'm mega happy! So what we can do here is turn one, Jeska's will with the Mana Crypt and Scalding Tarn, into most likely both Ragavan and the One Ring. That's good! That's like, we don't need a commander in this game. Our commander is gonna be the One Ring, drawing a lot of cards in here. Now there is a chance that someone doesn't have five cards in their hand when I'm firing off my Jeska's will, but the chance of someone having five cards or more are pretty good. So yeah, snap keep. Okay, so we went a little bit crazy here and we had to mulligan down to three. We're gonna bottom the Talisman, Inferno Plunge, Chromox, LED. And we're gonna keep this two lands and a Time Twister, hoping to, I guess, cope into a Crypt or something, or like a Sol Ring. You know, it's looking pretty grim. Thing is, I could have kept the Inferno Plunge and tried to go for the land off the top. It would probably, there's an argument for doing that, but like, then there's no like permanent mana. I don't know. I, I'm kind of relying on uh, the permanent mana to do something for a will here. Draw for turn. Land for turn will be a tapped, suppressed, and scary. I'll cast a Jeweled Lotus. I will crack it to cast my commander, Malcolm. And with my commander in play, I'll pass the turn. Draw a card for turn. First, I will put a Chromox into play, imprinting 
Comet Storm. I will tap Chrome Mox, casting a gamble. Gamble resolves. Let's go find something. Found the card. You could all see it there on the screen. Let's discard randomly. And that is a polluted delta. Then I will put Flooded Strand into play, tapping it, paying a life, finish, fetching up a land. That is the card I found, Tropical Island. It's into play. And with that, I will pass the turn with four cards in hand. Draw a card, cast this Mana Crypt, play this Scalding Tarn, sacrifice, find a Volcanic Island, free mana. And I want to cast a Jeska's Will, targeting Pontus. This is the most amazing Jeska's Will I've seen in my entire life. But well, four is the number. Jeska's Will resolves, I gain four red mana. And with that mana, I'm gonna sink it into the One Ring. My top deck was very kind to me. Uh, I will fear stats. No! <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that happens. My the wandering is counterspelled, and I pass the turn. Okay, I draw. I'm gonna play this marsh flats, uh, and I'm gonna pass the turn. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a ancient tomb, and I'll move to combat. We started the hate monster train, and let's continue <laughs> by hitting him for two. I take two. That will trigger Malcolm. Put a counter on them. Draw a card and discard a bribery. Post combat main phase. I'll tap for four, taking two damage and losing a counter, to cast the One Ring. There can only be one, right? <laughs> <laughs> the ring resolves, and I'll tap it to put a counter on it and draw one. And then I'll pass my turn. Take my turn. Land for turn will be Ancient Tomb. Then I will tap Tropical Island and Ancient Tomb, taking two damage to cast Rhystic Study. Rhystic Study resolves. I have three cards in hand and one red mana available. Pass turn. Untap. Heads is damage. Heads. <laughs> Heads. I take free damage. Verdant Catacomb. Land drop. Tap this for red. Cast a Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. And let's see a sacrifice Verdant Catacomb immediately as well. I will find an Underground Sea and I will use Mana Crypt to pay for Rhystic Study casting Ragavan. And here I pass. Uh, in your end step, I would like to sacrifice Marsh Flats, find a Blood Crypt, enter Stapped before I go to my turn. I will untap, draw for turn. I'm going to play this Ancient Tomb as Lamb for turn, and that's going to be my turn. I'll pass. Go to my turn and take a damage from the ring. I'll tap the one ring to draw two. Then I'll move to combat. I'll swing a Malcolm at Mons. I'll take two. That'll trigger Malcolm. I'll put a counter on them. Draw one and discard Steady Progress. I'll tap two, take two damage, and cast a Grim Monolith, not paying for Rusty. I'll tap it, paying two additional life, to cast a Tesseret's Gambit, not paying for Rusty. So Tesseret's Gambit resolves, I will draw two and then proliferate. Land per turn will be a island. I'll tap three mana to cast a Magistrate's Scepter. Pontus, are you in the right room for the game? Or is this casual? Did you mean a casual deck or? I, I don't know. We'll see. Not paying for a study. And with my secret commander in play, I'll pass the turn. Let's draw another card. Then for turn will be Misty Rainforest. Tap it, paying a life, fetching up a volcanic island. I will tap Tropical Island, as well as Ancient Tomb. Leave one colorless floating. I will cast a Gilded Drake. Well, I don't think you're taking my Ragavan, so I pass. You're gonna regret not taking something with value for you, but you may do it. Gilded Drake resolves, and I want to play Casual Magic too, Pontus, so I... Would like to switch Gilded Drake with your Malcolm. After that, I will cast Mana Vault. Mana Vault resolves. So I will then tap Mana Vault and the rest of my mana to cast Elena. Elena resolves. I will pass the turn with four cards in hand. I will untap. Heads is damage. Heads. This game is going great. Draw a card. Combat. I'm sorry, William, but the other guys have blockers. Dragavan is attacking you for two. Yeah, you're good. I take two. I will show you a flip. Uh, Force of Will is the card. That goes to Exile. We'll never be able to use that, but we gain a Treasure Token. And with the Treasure Token, one, two, three, total of five mana, so I can pay for Rhystic Study. And I will cost Derani. And here's the cool part with Derani. Punch is, is treating me like his favorite punching bag. And I don't like that. So we're gonna mark the Gilded Drake over there so that it attacks someone else because i don't like being attacked go away then i pass the turn okay draw for turn play this misty rainforest we're then gonna play a 
Mox Diamond, discarding Uttavara. You may draw off of Rusty. It's time to finally play some magic. I'm gonna fetch with uh, Mr. Rainforest, try to get a Underground Sea. Tap this Underground Sea for a blue, and we're gonna cast this Time Twister. Yeah, you may draw off of Rusty. I pass on Twister. Time Twister resolves. Uh, we shuffle our graveyards into our deck and uh, draw a fresh seven. So this is our uh, first seven, or I mean uh, the seven we drew off of the Twister. So we have the option now of jamming the Final Fortune and going for a win here. We haven't cast Rogue yet this game, which is really good now that we have the Brigi. So we have, like either we have the option of doing Final Fortune and then going to our second turn casting Hornfell and try to assemble a win from there. Or we could throw down Burgi, play Dagavan, play Paradise Mantel, get to red, and then we could play the Talisman. We could grab a wheel from Mons, uh, and we have a Fierce Guardianship protection for the wheel. It depends on like how we think we're gonna survive an entire like turn. There's no mana up from any of the blue players, so I think this is a window they want to go for it. I'm gonna cast this Final Fortune, not paying for it. Woo! You may draw for Rustic. Uh, yeah, I pass. Okay, so Final Fortune results. I would then like to go to my last and second turn, I guess. Okay, I will untap. Draw for turn. Play this Pollute Delta as my land for turn. I am then going to tap this Ancient Tomb for two colorless. Tap this Blood Crypt for a red. I'm gonna cast this Burgi. Okay, Burgi resolves. I would then like to proceed to playing a Rograk and triggering Burgi. And uh, not paying for Rhystic, you may draw. I'm gonna go ahead and play this Paradise Mantle, Trigger Burgi, and not paying for Rhystic study. Talisman of Indulgence, paying with my two Burgi mana, Trigger Burgi. Uh, you may draw for Rhystic. Okay, I, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and play this Praetor's Grasp, paying with Talisman of Indulgence, paying one life, uh, this Underground Sea, and the uh, one red mana from Burgi. I would like to put the Burgi trigger on the stack, and I would like to target Mons with the uh, Printer's Grasp. Not paying for Rhystic. I will lose a life to cast Force of Will, not paying for Rhystic Study, pitching Mental Misstep. The reason I'm doing it now is two reasons. One, I don't want him to steal cards from my library. Second, if he finds cards from my library, he keeps casting more cards, which can eventually just feed Rhystic Studded Rhetoric here. Redrick is never going to interact with this guy until he really have to, because this Rhystic Study is just fueling him value. So I need to actually interact with Redrick by stopping William from casting more spells so Redrick doesn't draw more cards. I would like to respond to Redrick's uh, Rhystic Trigger by putting a Fierce Guardianship on the stack and triggering Bergy, not paying for Rhystic. I drew from Williams casting a Fierce Guardianship. I will respond by casting Deflecting Swat, targeting or changing the direction of Fierce Guardianship to Praetor's Grasp. Fierce Guardianship counters by Praetor's Grasp. I'm going to put this to the graveyard. I'm going to tap Mox Diamond for a black. I'm going to cast this Wish Cloud Talisman, triggering Bergy, not paying for Rhystic Study. With the two mana floating, I'm going to pay one for the Wish Claw Talisman with the Burgi mana. Activating Wish Claw. Mons, you can have a Wish Claw Talisman with two monkey counters on it. Thank you. I don't think I'm going to get to keep it because like, he's going to die. So, or win. So I'm going to find this card with my Wish Claw Talisman. We are going to shuffle in a second after I have fetched with my Polluted Delta, losing one life. I'm going to find this uh, Volcanic Island with the um, Polluted Delta. I would like to pay one blue, cast a Chain of Vapor targeting the my Rograk with the Chain of Vapor, not paying for Rhystic Study. Bounce Rograk, continuing the Chain by sacrificing a Volcanic Island and targeting my Paradise Mantle. I don't think Rhetoric is playing Game of Chicken with me, so I'll just Mental Misstep it now. Not paying for Rhystic. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, yeah. I have no response for the mental misstep. Mental misstep resolves. I will die to this misstep uh, effectively. I'm gonna pass. So I had the plan we had going on with the Shane of Vapor. It might have looked a little bit weird there for a second, but the idea was to bounce Paradise Mantle, bounce the Rograk, bounce the 
Mox Diamond and then bounce the Wish Club Talisman. So then we could recast the Talisman and then we could recast all of our Zero Drops to trigger Burgesum. And then we would be able to fetch for a wheel with the mana we have generated through Burgi. So we didn't actually have that information that you were planning on costing a wheel. I'm kind of curious right now. I mean, wheel is a great counter to someone with Rhystic Study. And if that wheel happens, and if we're still able to counter and interact with the guy, I mean, we nullify the value rhetoric has basically accumulated here. So Pontus question, what if you knew that he was his final outcome would have been a wheel of fortune, would you still mentally misstep this? Nah, not really. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the, some small takeaway is to like, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, this is the outcome. I'm going to wheel and you should potentially let me do it or things maybe. Go to my turn and lose three life. We'll start off by at activating the one ring and drawing four cards. Land for turn will be a basic island. I will tap for six, sacrificing my surprise and scary to cast a part the water rail. Not paying for a six study. Part the water rail resolves. I will just go to clean up and then go to my next turn. Actually, Pontus, you have to go to combat with your gilded drake. It really wants to punch someone's face. Wait, what's combat mods? I've never heard of this. It's the thing you never do. What? I'm t I'm helping you here. I'm teaching Wait. you combat. <laughs> the, the thing I never do? Yeah, you never... Use the game? What? You never go to combat. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the Drake at Rhetoric. The blocks take five. And I will make a clue. And now, Pontus, you can end your uh, annoying turn. Discarding these two cards and then going to my next turn. Untap and take four. I'll tap the one ring to draw five. I'll take two damage to cast a arcane signals, not paying for a stick. Land for turn will be a city of traitors. I will tap three to cast a flux channeler, not paying for a stick unless it's shortcut there. I, I won't be paying for a stick unless I say otherwise. Tap two mana, cast a dramatic reversal. Dramatic reversal will first proliferate with flux channeler, just the one ring. There's no other counters on to proliferate. And then I will untap all my non-land permanents. I will activate the one ring to draw seven cards. That's a pretty sh sad showing, so we're just gonna have to play some stuff out and pass. So we're casting a Chromox, not playing first stick, imprinting a Seagate Restoration, and that's actually it. We're just passing after that. X! No, I, I Pontus. said it! <laughs> Pontus, you have to go to combat! I, I said it! <laughs> uh, punch rhetoric now! I remembered! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a clue. Yeah, I'm swinging five more at Rhetoric. No blocks. Then I'm just going to my cleanup. I'll be discarding my current hand and keeping that hand. Okay, take my turn. Land for turn will be Rejuvenating Springs. First game action is to tap Tropical Island and Rejuvenating Springs, as well as Ancient Tomb, paying two life. Cast Finale Devastation, X equals, X equals two. I pass on the Dockside Search. No response. Finale of Devastation resolves. I'll go search up fetched up a dockside and I make nine then I will cat I will crack excuse me four treasures going to five to cast displacer kitten yikes uh, yeah I don't have anything against this pass displacer kitten resolves sweet then I will cast jeweled lotus trigger displacer kitten targeting dockside I have nothing of value to contribute I gain nine more treasures going up to 14 lotus petal displacer kitten targeting dockside once again Nine more treasures as a result. Let's go up to 23 treasures then. Crack one treasure. Soaring. Targeting Dockside with Displacer Kitten's ability. Going up nine more treasures to 31. Crack one treasure, making green. Crack Jeweled Lotus for three blue. Cast Thrasios. I will then go down to 27 treasures and cast a Fabricate. Trigger Displacer Kitten, targeting Dockside, making nine more. Found this card, Frexion Dreadnought. Still using sorcery speed spells. I'm going to crack one treasure going down to 35. I will cast Ponder, triggering Disposer Kitten, targeting Dockside, going up to 44 treasures. Here are my three cards. I will put these back in this order and draw the top card. Crack one treasure, go down to 34, casting Phyrexian Dreadnought. I will respond to this. Float to Colorless Mana, casting a Serum Snare, targeting your commander Alana? Alana? Paying first. Crack one treasure, going, uh, making green, cast Veil of Summer. It doesn't really matter, but I guess I'll just do it because I can. I'll pay for a stick to cast this Fluster Storm. 
storm it's 11 cop piece total i'll throw enough treasures at it to pay for it which is you said 11 so we go to 22 treasures i'm rich they love summer resolve so i draw a card serum snare fizzles Frexian dreadnought comes into play and i have to immediately sacrifice it unless i sacrifice creatures total power 12 or more so i will go ahead and sacrifice this i will go down to 19 treasures cast staff of domination when that resolves I can then tap Elena and put 12 into the pool because of her ability, which allows me to infinitely tap her and untap her with Daffa Domination until I can draw something for a win. So I've already played Finale Devastation. What I can do is by drawing my deck, I can get something like Walking Ballista, which is what I'll try to do in this case. Cast Walking Ballista and then waste y'all. GG's, I win. Thanks, Terminator. Well, fellas, I think we can say that the One Ring and Rhystic Study were the highlights of the game highlight cards and i think it made sense that the first one ring was countered yes and then we saw how much pontus value got out of his very very interesting i was just about to say that 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 force of will that stopped my ring had an impact i think yeah of course it was a good force i approve i would have done the same yeah it was a fierce negation but yeah still yeah, <laughs> yeah. wait did you draw I, that fierce was... of... ah sorry william you go ahead the moons are so low that the one ring is just gets you there more than like Rhystic, for example. Yeah. Um, it can be very terrifying, like in these super slow games. Well, there's a point near the end, Pondas where you drew six cards, I think, right? <laughs> seven. He drew seven. 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 Right. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sitting here with a grip of every all the answers, like Staff of Domination, all that sort of stuff. I'm like, he's going to win this game. <laughs> he's going to snatch it right from me from here, just because the extra turn spell and then the one ring, like this enormous to have those two together. You'll find something. Yeah, so, I probably would have won the game if I only was playing a good deck. And, I wasn't. <laughs> and if your Malcolm wasn't <laughs> stolen, because you would have cast one of your turn spells there, right? For free. Uh... Malcolm was taken by Gilbert. Malcolm, if, Ma if I had Malcolm, yeah, if I had Malcolm, I probably would have won this game, yeah. Because then I would have been able to cast my next Ripple Tide, which gives me, <laughs> it gives me proliferate on each cast spell I cast. Ah. Which makes it even easier for me to storm off with the One Ring and drawing more cards and then Magister Scepter to win the game. Don't you die soon? Because you were going to take seven from the ring, go down to 15. <sighs> you never know. Two turns, Pontus, then you're dead. Yeah, I'll probably win on that turn. Okay. In, on that time. Okay. To be honest. I believe you. Uh, I have three things, four things to not die. One of them I had in my hand to just bounce the ring with the bounce ball. All right. That, yeah, if you have a bounce so, ball, yeah, you're absolutely yeah, fine. Uh... Yeah, and I had that. So, like, I just use the one ring until I'm set enough to not die, and then I make sure I don't die. No, I just say for me, with Rhystic Study, uh, that's the other thing we were talking about is, you know, I followed your guys' advice to just go for it even in turn two, see what happens. I mean, it just goes without saying it's an enormously powerful card. So yeah, get you there again. Like I didn't have that much interaction. So when Pontus was like, I think I'm not playing chicken. He was correct. I just, I think we would have died if you didn't, uh, you didn't do that Pontus. Uh, William said that he was going for wheel uh, as the end state of that turn. I actually think countering was just wrong for me because you won because I won't counter that basically. If he wheels, it's a, it's reasonable to think that he will fizzle. He might not, which is fair. But like, I'm still in a better position if he wheels than if I, he doesn't wheel. Yeah, but we didn't know he was gonna wheel. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, in, in, with full hindsight, in like, yeah, in play, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. yes, communication here uh, would have helped William and you in this situation. Basically, that's that's what I think. Mm. Yeah, I think that I should have been more vocal about uh, putting the wheel, like especially before. But it's like it's 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 hard to you know argue because like I wasn't gonna like put the wheel on the stack from just the British grasp. I was gonna like play. There, there was a couple of lines actually, but like uh, it it wasn't gonna be my very first play. That was that I was. You were gonna, gonna take do, my but... breach right or something? Uh, yeah, I could have done that. I could have I could have gotten your dock side. Oh, actually, the the line would probably be. To get the degrid off the pretty grasp and then get uh like get chain of vapor off the wish cloud talisman so then i could do all the bouncy stuff and then i replay wish cloud talisman you guys would have bounced my degrid but i could just recast it after you bounce it and then i could have played wish cloud talisman and then i could have like gone into a wheel or something and that yeah. would be protected but um defense grid he's talking yeah. about basically grand abolisher artifact yeah yeah that's the one
All right, everyone, that's it for us. Have a great evening, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye.